back to my presentation though. Okay, well, I did do screen share, so let me introduce you first. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. If you wonder why I'm broadcasting at 6 p.m. Pacific time when my usual show is 11 a.m. Pacific time, it's because my guest is coming to us from Thailand, where it's about 8 o'clock in the morning. So 11 o'clock a.m. Pacific time would be in the middle of the night for her. If you're familiar with my work, and I'm the host of the Truth About Weight Loss Summit, she was a guest one year. And I'm so excited to have her back to tell more of her story because she's a registered work work. She's a registered nurse. That's what happens when I work late. But she is working at a spa in Thailand. And it's really quite interesting what she does there. And she's also going to talk about toxins like that are in food and other areas like like things that you use to wash yourself with. And they can actually disrupt our hormones and really impair our immunity. Please welcome Nurse Nikki Bravada. Nice to see you again after all these years. Yeah, thank you, Chef AJ. Thank you for having me. And Sawadika from Thailand. I'm in Phuket, in uh, an island in the south of Thailand. And uh, I've lived here for about six years. So it's really fun to be able to connect with uh, my fellow Americans and, of course, anyone else watching from around the world. Uh, I'm really happy to tell you a little bit about Thailand and what we're doing here in the really cool place that I work. It's more of a, I'd say lifestyle medicine center, although we're not certified yet. We're uh, looking forward to that. But um, we have been practicing kind of lifestyle medicine, I guess, since, since day one. Um, and I was lucky enough to end up here because I actually was working in an integrative cancer center for many years in Arizona uh, with Dr. Thomas Lodi. And he loved Thailand. And I, I finally, I quickly learned why when I came here, it's because it's such an amazing, peaceful place. The people are really peaceful and um, it's a great place to be vegan and plant-based. It is really like traditionally a very healthy place in terms of their, their food. Uh, although unfortunately I would say, uh, sorry to Thailand because our country has metastasized here. Uh, it is Burger King and in McDonald's and, you know, all the conventional things that you can find here now. And unfortunately, because it's affordable, um, people are choosing to eat it. So one of the things that I'm really passionate about here is helping people uh, to understand about better nutrition, better lifestyle habits, uh, how they can take control of their health and, and say no to those things and go back to the really like traditional ways of, of living, you know, a really healthy Thai lifestyle, which is more like outdoors or around nature. Um, one of the cool things that, that I love about being here is that meditation is part of the lifestyle here and it's normal. Uh, in fact, my, my two children, I have a 14 year old and 10 year old and they're in school here in a school called United World College, which is really cool. There's only about 17 of them around the world. But one of the special things about this particular school is that they teach the kids every day meditation. They start with, they call time in. So they are every day having to do some sort of intentional mindful practice, yoga, they support their vegan lifestyle. My kids have been lifelong vegans. Uh, and uh, so, and they also learn about um, social emotional learning. So they focus more on that emotional aspect of friendships and everything. It's great. So I couldn't be more than happy to, to live here, to work here, you know, to be a part of the lifestyle here. Um, and I, and I actually really want to tell you guys more about this really great place that I work because one of the, the cool initiatives that we started a, year, a few years back was a lifestyle checkup. Uh, as a nurse, of course, conventionally, we are, you know, expecting that people go for their annual checkup. You know, you go to the hospital and you have your blood work done, but by the time you get those results, you know, and they're abnormal, you've had a problem for a while. By the time your cholesterol is elevated, by the time, you know, your liver numbers are abnormal or, you know, your kidney functions off, you've been, you've been going at it for a while. And so we, we do this really great lifestyle checkup. We call the, um, the 360 health checkup and it's, it's really a, a lifestyle checkup. So we're looking into everything, including what I was just talking about. Are you, you know, how's your stress level? Are you using some form of intentional mindful practice? How's your sleep? Um, everything really under the guidance of the American Board of Lifestyle Medicine. Uh, you know, how's your nutrition? Are you exercising? How's your social relationships? Um, and one of the other things that I want to share with you today that I think really goes unnoticed is toxins. You know, what are you exposed to kind of unintentionally sometimes? I mean, these things are really hard to avoid. Uh, and so I want to show you about one test that we do that maybe you might not know about, 
um, that can be really helpful for you in your annual checkup. Maybe you can request this somewhere. You might have to go to a functional medicine doctor to check it, but it can really give you a lot of information about your health. Um, so I'm going to, sorry, so AJ, I got to try to figure out how to get back to my, um, uh, okay. Maybe oh. just, uh, just whatever's on your screen. I've enabled the screen share. And I'd also love to hear more also about your personal story when you became vegan. Why? And that is so awesome that you raised your kids vegan. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, because I worked with Dr. Lodi, uh, starting in ooh, 2008, my daughter was one years old actually. And, um, you know, I always thought I had a really healthy lifestyle. Of course I grew up in Michigan and, you know, we, um, we grew up eating what, what we were told and, you know, cereal and soda, <laughs> we called it pop in Michigan, but, uh, you know, not that I knew that that's not healthy, but you know, we just did what, what every other American does. And when I started working with Dr. Lodi, I started understanding more the role that nutrition plays in health because, uh, our patients were required to basically change their lifestyle overnight, uh, particularly as it came to nutrition. And I got curious about it. I wanted to learn more about it. I dove in, I read every single book under the sun. And because my daughter was just a baby, I had just stopped uh, nursing her at that moment. And of course I put her onto whole milk as every doctor suggests uh, to get the, those fats in and everything. Um, I immediately knew, you know, something was not right with that. And I, I'm not, I wasn't just changing my lifestyle for me. I was changing my lifestyle for my baby. And so I needed to know everything under the sun. So uh, I guess for me, it was easy. It was kind of an overnight decision to stop eating meat. Uh, dairy took a little bit longer. We understand that there's a, um, an addictive quality to it, right? I mean, it, we, we're used to not only that, but the sugar that's in the foods, you know? And so I think that was probably a, a little bit of a challenge for me to get those things out of my life. It took about a year, but I was successful. That was uh, over 13 years ago. And um, now we... Um, decided to, to come to Thailand because my, the doctor that I worked with, he uh, wanted to, to live here. Like I said, he wanted to retire here and set up clinics. So I started traveling here in 2011 and 2012 to, for short periods of time, I would go back and forth because I had my second baby, she was really little. And, uh, and so I would come here just to train the nurses into this cancer program. Uh, it was more of an integrative cancer program. And uh, it was really challenging because I don't speak Thai. <laughs> And uh, the nurses are completely tied and learning something totally out of the conventional realm. In fact, like at that time, you know, the, they didn't under, even understand what vegan was or, or even, well, I guess some ties did because actually they say, they say J, if you're J, that means like vegetarian, but the, vegan isn't really a thing. Like they would say vegetarian, oh, but you still eat fish or, oh, you know, you can still have you know, some chicken sometimes or something. So uh, it was a really big challenge coming here, uh, helping to learn how to live a different way and help other people see it a different way. But now fast forward, I've been here um, six years. I, I actually required to move here in 2015 to set up a brand new cancer center with Dr. Lodi here in actually very nearby where I live in the north of uh, Phuket. And uh, because my kids started going to this school, that I loved, I was like, I'm not going back. You know, this is a great opportunity for, for my kids. The lifestyle here is really relaxed. Um, I love Thai people, I love Thai culture. Um, and, and, the, and the weather's amazing. I live right on the beach right here and it's really affordable to live here. Uh, so to me, it was just, it, was, it, it feels like home. It was a perfect place. I grew up in Michigan, I grew up in the snow. So to uh, go for that, that is so different. So yeah. if you don't speak Thai, do, do, do most Thai people speak English? Yeah, actually, you can expect that like when you're in Bangkok or in Phuket, you know, that people because it's so international here. That's another thing that I love is that there's people from all over the world. So, you, you know, Thais are learning English from an early age. And it's a, it's a great skill if they have really strong English skills because it's, it's kind of the universal language here. But I love that you meet people from everywhere here. So I work with uh, people from all over the world too. We have a really international community where I work, it's great. That is so cool. And it's pretty easy to, to eat vegan there. Absolutely, well, we're in the, the land of, you know, uh, fruit abundance here. So you can just walk out to the road right now and there's vendors out there that are selling, you know, bananas and pineapple and mango, a lot of this really sweet fruits, but you can find some super awesome exotic fruits like, uh, of course, papaya, dragon fruit, you know, um, durian is one of my favorite kind of weird fruits. It stinks. You either love it or you hate it, 
but it is such, they call it the king of fruit because it is such, and it has such amazing health benefit to it. In fact, it's very high in sulfur, which is one of the things I'm going to talk about later as we talk about toxins in the body. And, um, but if people say, if you eat too much of it, you get hot that it can like make you sick, but I think it would just make you fat because it actually has a lot of fats in it. And, uh, but it also has so many other like health benefits and even anti-cancer properties to it, considering that it's sweet. Um, and then there's mangosteen, which is the opposite. It's the queen of fruit and mangosteen is just amazing, delicious, really sweet. Um, you'd have to, you'd have to look it up to see if you're not familiar with it, but um, you can find all kinds of exotic fruits here. And then vegetables are widely grown, but one of the biggest problems that we have here is that the use of pesticides. And so you have to be really careful. Like a lot of people say, be careful about the pineapple here because it's grown in the soil where they're using a lot of um, pesticides in the food. And unfortunately that's, it's not really regulated as well. So you can uh, accidentally stumble upon a ton of toxins in your food. And it's actually, uh, since I'm looking at results of the tests for toxins for people, uh, you can see I've seen some trends over the years, depending on where somebody's coming from and um, in, in terms of the, the types of toxins that they have in their body. And actually, I thought because Thai people eat a lot of rice traditionally that they would have really high levels of arsenic, for example, as a heavy metal. But I'll tell you, when I see results of people coming from the Western world, we see much higher levels of arsenic. So uh, it can really be dependent on, on where you're coming from, with the type of you know, toxins that you get exposed to. I'll explain that more as we go through um, what I'm gonna share with you today. That's great. Did you have the slides to work? Let me click on it here. All right. Does it show up there? I, not yet. Are you doing share screen? There's a, I, I enabled it. You, there's a button that's- oh, 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 okay, hold on. on the lower, <laughs> I think it's on the lower for where you see it. Okay, just give me a second here. Is it human in Thailand or what's- It is, is it human. It is, you, you'll notice in case my hair is getting, you know, a little bit um, puffed up as we go on because even right now it's the rainy season. And so um, it is really hot right now. And, and you can expect that it's about to start raining a lot. So uh, we're, we're getting there. Okay, there we go. Woo, did it work? Nope, I don't see anything, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Um, so it, it, it says screen share. It's usually in green, a, pr a pretty shade of green. It's next to chat and reactions on the Zoom toolbar. We should have probably uh, practiced it before we went live. Yeah, so sorry about that. Actually, you know what? I see it now, and I just need to get to um, the part where I can actually share my screen. Give me one second, sorry. That's okay. Okay. There you go. Perfect. I, I'm, I'm a little bit tech challenged. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. So I was explaining to you guys about Tanya Pura, and I just wanted to share with you a few of the kind of photos of Tanya Pura. Actually, if you look at our, um, at our website, you'll see some amazing aerial photos. You look at this place and you go, ah, okay, I'm going to get fit at this place because traditionally Tanya Pearl was, was um, built for sport actually, because the, the owner uh, who is a, a really amazing German man uh, came here and actually first he built the school, which is attached to Tanya Pearl because he came here and he thought that he didn't really like any of the schools here for his son, so he built one. So he built, it was called Phuket International Academy at the time, and it was based on social emotional learning and meditation and mindfulness in the school, um, as well as service. They go out and serve the community, and it became uh, recognized as a UWC school a few years later. But at the time, he was really into triathlon training, so he built this uh, facility, Tanya Pura. So swimming, tennis, track, running. Bicycling, bicycling, these are all like the sports that you can find there. But a uh, few years after that, he really got into meditation and he built the Mind Center. So we have a hotel that's actually totally dedicated just for, for meditation. It's kind of morphed into the rest of our lifestyle programs now. But then he got into health because he was aging and, and he decided that he needed a place where he could go to have doctors come that, you know, he really felt were talented and he built the Lifestyle Medicine Clinic. And then that's when I joined on a, a couple years after that. And uh, because of my experience in working with cancer, I helped them realize that 
there is so much potential to put everything that they had there. They already had a dietitian and nutrition and sports and everything, but put it together into programs that would help people to prevent cancer, prevent again, diabetes, heart disease, obesity, autoimmune conditions, you name it, their lifestyle conditions, you know, and to a certain degree, you know, there's some, some genetic uh, component, maybe about 4% of cancers are actually genetic, but um, what we quickly realized was that we were perfectly situated to help people understand how to improve their lives through lifestyle, through changing their lifestyle. So we go through this whole checkup. Um, we call our 360 health checkup, as I mentioned, and it includes a uh, visit with our dietitian. We go into their body composition analysis and understand kind of how their tissues and um distributed in their body. That's what you see there, the body composition. This is a really great test, actually. It's simple. It's like a sophisticated scale. And it can tell somebody actually about their level of muscle mass, how their, how their tissue is distributed in their body, muscle mass, fat mass, but it also gives like your metabolic age. So if you're 40 and it says you're 20, great. But if it's 40 and it says you're 60 or, you know, 70 or 80, then, oh, okay. Like you, you need to reverse that. And it's just some calculations about how your distributed, your, your body weight is distributed, uh, your body tissue, I should say. And then also it shows about visceral fat, which is the fat that's, you know, internal, that's covering the organ, maybe not the stuff you see on the outside, but if you start to have a, you know, grow more of a, a belly, it can be fat that's covering the organs on the inside. And this can be the type of fat that is more and more dangerous, more associated with chronic disease. Um, and so we use that information to also find out what are your goals? Do you want to lose weight? Uh, most commonly it's, I want to lose weight and build muscle, but we have people that want to gain weight too. Sometimes they're underweight. Um, and it's particularly in Thailand, we see, you know, the average Thai person is maybe 50 kilos or less, you know, 45 kilos. So, uh, sometimes they want to, they're trying to gain weight. So we, we meet people where they're at. We want to understand how through nutrition, uh, we can help them to get to their goals. And by the way, through nutrition, we have a completely, uh, plant-based kitchen. Um, we, we do serve the, the whole population. We understand that people are, you know, coming from different directions. So again, we meet them where they're at. But uh, we do recommend for all of our health programs that people switch to plant-based meal plans, um, plant-based lifestyle. I mean, really just make that switch and do it now. Um, and and uh, we help them, we guide them through that with, with programs for, for dietitian, with our dietitian, but we incorporate that into their fitness program too. So we do a complete fitness assessment during this checkup because everybody's at different levels and we wanna make sure that people start doing what is safe. But beyond that, we have them meet with our doctors. So we also wanna understand if they have any conditions that would prevent them from doing certain types of exercise, particularly not, I mean, not just like cardiovascular risk and these types of things, but also something like adrenal fatigue. We see this more often than not where people become, they have a lot of stress in their lifestyle and you know, they're, or they're under sleeping, for example. And then they come and they get really excited. They come to Tanya Purr and they see like, oh, all these classes, we have over a hundred classes a week and they're like, I want to go to boot camp, but I want to go to, you know, CrossFit and all these like, you know, hardcore classes. But we find out through these tests that they have something called adrenal fatigue, which is where they've just been stressing for such a long period of time. And then the adrenal glands, which make the, the stress hormone cortisol, kind of like a, a, a diabetic that, you know, is making insulin, 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 and the pancreas gets tired, the, the adrenal glands get tired and they can't make as much cortisol and they feel sometimes tired, but wired, they still maybe have energy. It's not that they're actually really fatigued, but that is a common symptom. And we need them to do something like yoga, meditation, walking, swimming, something more low intensity. So starting out on a fitness program is great if you're not already exercising, but understanding where you're at is paramount because sometimes you can work against yourself if you're doing too much intensity or maybe too little exercise or something. So it's really important to know kind of where you're at, where you want to be and get some guidance, you know, before starting out on, on a fitness program. And that's what most people come to us. They come to us for fitness. Uh, but the other thing is that there can be some other medical conditions that we can detect in this checkup. Like if someone has an alteration in their thyroid levels or they have some more cardiovascular disease risk because we do uh, what's called a bioscan, a bioscan we don't make any diagnosis from, but it, it's looking at biofeedback from the body and it can tell the doctor, okay, maybe we need to prioritize the gut. It gives us indication if there's maybe some inflammation in the gut and we look at the symptoms and we can make some very specific recommendations for people about how to um, improve their 
their lifestyle and where to prioritize it and what tests to do next. Now, if you just sit down and you tell your doctor, I'm really fatigued and I feel bloated. Well, where do you begin? There's a ton of causes for fatigue. So they would, might probably suggest that, you know, checking your complete blood count, checking your iron levels, checking your thyroid, you know, those are all really common things. But from this information that we get, because we spend so much time to understand what are the factors in your lifestyle? Have you been through a lot of stress? Are you not sleeping very well? You know, all these things, we can really start to hone in on what to, uh, where to prioritize your treatment and how to make these suggestions. And one of the other things that we do during this checkup, like I said at the beginning, is, is check into toxins. Uh, and so I think it's really important for us to understand that uh, the symptoms, you know, that we end up with really are just an overload for the immune system. And so sometimes when we see that we're getting chronic infections, uh, painful, you know, inflammatory disorders, um, you know, allergies, these chronic diseases, these things, it's because our, our body has just been overwhelmed. And that's easy to understand because our lifestyles can be pretty overwhelming. We undersleep, we overeat, um, we are exposed to a lot of different well, viruses. I mean, well, no, you know, I think a lot of people are really paying attention to, you know, how they can keep themselves well. Uh, sometimes we take a lot of unnecessary medications. Um, stress, of course, can, can place a burden on our immune system. But one of the things that I want to share with you about today is about heavy metals, because I think that this is the one that probably really goes unnoticed. Um, and <clears throat> they, they really can interfere with how we absorb our minerals. And uh, also they can in large in high amounts become a really big problem for our immune system, for our enzyme systems in our body, for even things like risk factors like Alzheimer's, um, high thyroid issues, hormone imbalances. So I want to explain kind of about these, where they come from, what we should know about them. Uh, it's a lot of information. I'll try not to bore you with too many details. If there's questions at the end, you can, you can always ask. Um, but it's something that we should be a little bit more aware of because uh, they, they really go unnoticed. You might not have any, any symptoms from these, but they can, like I said, interfere with minerals that are so critically important for the production of our hormones and for uh, our thyroid, for example, and how our immune system functions. So this is an example report from, from one of our guests. I, I just pulled it up because uh, it's, it's quite common. We have to understand that heavy metals are, are normal, uh, I guess, if you want to call it that, because uh, we, we get them from our moms. We pass them to our babies, sorry to our daughters and our sons, uh, because we, we pass them to our babies during birth and uh, we accumulate them as we age. And sometimes we don't even know like that we're getting them because they're in everything. They're in our environment. They're in our body products. They're in uh, the air that we breathe, you know, the foods that we eat. So they're, they're very difficult to avoid, but uh, just knowing where they come from can be the first step in understanding how to avoid them. That would be the first thing that you want to do is try to avoid the things that are bringing you these heavy metals. So be careful about your body products. Like I said, um, that's commonly where we see like makeup, for example, uh, Chef AJ, we were talking about makeup earlier, you know, and, and how, uh, you know, it's, it's good to avoid the type of makeup that maybe isn't as a good quality. There's the environmental working group. You can look up certain products on there. They have, you know, a rating scale for which ones have less um, chemicals. I'm not saying that you need to overhaul and get rid of everything today. You know, your, your shampoos and your um, body lotions and your um, laundry soaps and these types of things, but maybe be thoughtful about what you buy next time. That's the advice that I could give is be careful about what you're getting because a lot of these things are really hidden and we don't notice. Um, so aluminum, for example, I'll start at the top. Aluminum um, is more commonly found in our body products like our deodorant. It's the main ingredient that stops us from sweating. So just a little change. This happened to me actually when I came. I When I came to Thailand, you asked me, is it hot and is it sweaty? Yes. And when I came here, I had never used regular deodorant, but I started using it again because I was tired of sweating and my aluminum actually went quite high. So um, I, I stopped using the regular deodorant. I just decided to be, you know, the, the sweaty girl here. That's pretty normal. <laughs> and uh, my aluminum came back down. And the problem with having high aluminum is that it's a, it's a risk factor for Alzheimer's um, and it can interfere with how our brain functions. So it can cause brain fog. 
Um, but it also can interfere with how we absorb the mineral called silicon. So uh, typically when we see people that have high aluminum that's crossing, by the way, anything that goes into that high plus level uh, is crossing the line. And uh, this is becoming a little bit excessive in the body. It, eventually it'll go to the excess and it will turn red. That's when we really have to jump in and do something about it because we know that it can be more of a risk. But silicon, this test also, by the way, tests minerals at the same time and vitamins. I'll go back to that. But, uh, and if you're wondering about this test, just to tell you, it's called the oligo scan and it actually uses the palm of the hand. Now there's a lot of different ways to check heavy metals. Someone will probably ask this question, like, what is this test? What, how do I get it done? Uh, it's good to know that there's a lot of different ways to go about testing your heavy metals. And it's not that like, you know, a lot of arguments happen like, oh, this one's better than the other. But the whole point is just being, just know what you have. The amounts might vary a little bit if you check your urine or if you check your hair sample, maybe that's what you've been excreting over three months. And the, the, um, the tissue sample, this is actually using a light that's measuring the reflection from the heavy metals uh, and the minerals in your body. And it gives us an, an estimate about these, these metals. Now, is it 100% accurate? I mean, it's the same as like that body composition analysis. It, there's other ways to check your body fat level, but it's a great way to start. It's a great way to understand what's there. And when you compare the tests, because I've compared urine tests and hair tests and these things, even biofeedback, they're the same. So the same types of metals are elevated. Maybe the amounts might vary a little bit. So let's not get caught up in those details. But uh, it's just important to understand what you are, you know, exposed to, how much you've accumulated, and then how, more importantly, I love this test because it tells about minerals, because most people don't even realize how important these, these minerals are, um, where they're coming from in our foods, and, um, and, and how they're affected by heavy metals. So silicon, like I was saying, sorry, I jumped a, a little bit there, but if we look at the level of aluminum, it's not too high and the silicon's not too bad either on this particular patient, but silicon is great for our hair, skin, and nails, uh, but also our joints too. So, and silicon is um, <clears throat> found in things like horsetail, which is a plant. You can find um, silica, you know, replacement in, in terms of a supplement, of course, um, in, in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, uh, silicon is found. So, that one can be affected by aluminum. By the way, we don't get super nervous about all these heavy metals. Uh, some of them are more natural. I'm gonna skip a little bit over some of them. Some of them are found in only really like metal working environments, but you can uh, pay more attention to the aluminum, cadmium, mercury, and lead because these ones are more associated with health issues. Sometimes arsenic in, in high amounts um, can interfere, of course, with the immune function. Overall, like I said, overall, they're all going to interfere with the immune function and enzyme systems. Uh, but let's see, cadmium, I want to talk about that one because it's the highest one on this, this person's test. And one that we find is a really big issue for hormones because it will interfere with how we absorb zinc. Uh, and zinc is necessary for the production of well, it's great for our immune system. Something that we also really want to pay attention to right now with, with everything with COVID is paying attention that we have good zinc levels because everyone knows that zinc is important for the immune function, but it's also important for the production of testosterone. And it's important for, for men, particularly like um, sometimes we see guys that have low testosterone levels. We can simply optimize their zinc levels and they'll start to produce more levels of testosterone. Even in women, it, we have much less testosterone, but it's still an important um, hormone for us because it helps us to keep our muscle mass. It helps us to keep our energy up. Uh, there's some cardioprotective effects for men. Um, so there's a really important thing to keep the levels of, of zinc up. And cadmium can be found in our soil. It's, it's commonly found in cigarette smoke, but if you're not a smoker or you're not exposed to secondhand smoke, it's found in the soil. So understanding that buying organic vegetables can help. Uh, if you can't find organic, this is a major thing here in Thailand. A lot of people don't go through the certification and if they are, it's imported. So it's been traveling for ages to get here. Um, the, but, it, but for me, my, my mindset about the, the cadmium or organic, sorry, is about like, okay, I know that the conventional vegetables are sprayed with pesticides, but Hopefully the organic ones are not. So when I can, I try to choose to try, you know, buy organic. Um, and also the most important thing, like I said, about these things that are grown in the, that are found in the soil is to understand that when we eat animal products, um, 
animals also are eating from the soil. They have their snout in the soil. So they're consuming a lot of these pesticides and, and uh, heavy metals too. And it accumulates in their tissues. So just like us, when we accumulate heavy metals in our tissues, our bones, our fat tissue, uh, our brain, even so does the animal. So we, a lot of people will say to me, well, if this is found in the soil, then I really shouldn't be eating vegetables or fruits that are grown in the soil. I should avoid those things. But the opposite is true. Because when we talk about minerals, the reason we test this together with, with minerals is that minerals help protect us from these heavy metals. When we have less minerals, we can absorb more heavy metals. When we get the heavy metals, they sit on the receptors where the minerals should go. So it's like this downward spiral. So we have to understand that when we eat animal proteins, they don't contain a lot of fiber uh, or not at all. <laughs> and they're also a very concentrated source of these heavy metals. And so the trick here is that even if you can't buy organic or even if these things have been sprayed, they have fiber and they have minerals, the fruits and vegetables. So it's important to eat a lot of these because they actually will help us to detoxify. They support our detoxification uh, pathways naturally in the, river, in the liver uh, and, and throughout the body. And because of that fiber, it acts like a sponge in the digestive system. So it actually will help you to detoxify better. So don't worry about, you know, if you can't find organic or you think that some of these things contain heavy metals, still eat lots of, of fruits and vegetables that will help. Uh, one that I think is really important to note is mercury. Um, mercury is a heavy metal that is commonly found in our amalgam fillings uh, in certain age groups. I noticed that the, the younger uh, generation that I see, like when I see younger patients now, they don't, they don't have as many uh, fillings. Maybe they just have like the, the white fillings, not the silver and the mercury. Even silver is on here. Silver, um, besides being found in, in fillings too, also can contain like the, it's like a combination of mercury and silver. So even if you have silver ones, they may also contain mercury. Um, and it's really important to make sure that if you're gonna be getting these removed because having these mercury fillings gives you this ongoing exposure um, that you see a holistic dentist because you don't want to just drill right down into the mercury filling and you would have a large exposure to this mercury uh, because that can be a big problem for your thyroid because mercury will interfere with the absorption of iodine. And this is something I had no idea about. I had, after my first daughter or after my second daughter, I went to the dentist and I had my mercury amalgams uh, removed. And uh, within probably a few months, six months, uh, I started feeling really fatigued. And I found out that I had hypothyroid. I went and checked and I was really surprised by this because I felt that by that time I had already a really healthy lifestyle and I couldn't understand why I ended up with hypothyroid. And I thought, okay, it's stress. It's having a new baby. It's not sleeping. Yes. All those things can matter. Our gut health can matter as it relates to our thyroid. But mercury is like this unknown thing that people are really surprised by. And we need iodine for the function of the thyroid. But what happens is um, when we have mercury, it blocks the absorption of the, of the iodine. And also our receptors on the, on, the, on the thyroid can get filled with things like fluoride, chloride, and bromide. So you see here, even this patient has a very, at the bottom has a very high level of fluoride and fluoride will also interfere with uh, the function of the thyroid too. So we need to be aware of where these things are coming from. Iodine uh, is probably not an easy thing to get in the diet is found in seaweed. So not unless maybe if you're from Japan or someone that's eating a lot of, you know, sea vegetables, you're getting plenty of iodine, but most people aren't getting enough. It's why they started to iodize salt because people were ending up with goiters. Now, of course, we don't want to have too much of the table salt because it's also a toxic form of salt. So what do you do? Uh, firstly, you want to check. You want to know about what your iodine levels are. You want to know about how your thyroid is functioning. Sometimes you go in, you get your blood test and your thyroid levels come back normal. I think, Chef AJ, you just recently interviewed a doctor about thyroid. Uh, you talked a little bit about this, Dr. Patel, right? Um, yeah. And you talked about how, you know, the iodine is, is, is important for the thyroid. And that's very true. But you want to know what your levels are uh, to begin with. And also checking about your levels of thyroid hormone, your TSH, free T3, free T4, and even sometimes an anti-TPO because you can have maybe some autoimmune um, in relation with um, like Hashimoto's, for example. So, and even then uh, the thyroid still needs iodine. So uh, we, we really want to know what those levels are. 
uh, before beginning and also finding out if you have mercury because it's really common to, to have mercury, not just amalgam fillings, but the other big one that I think a lot of people uh, need to be more aware of is fish because um, fish, just like the other animals and just like us, accumulate heavy metals in their tissue. So we're talking about the large fish, big fish that eats a little fish. So tuna, ma um, king, king mackerel, shark, these ones that eat, the little ones also accumulate mercury in their body. And now the recommendation is even, can you imagine like for how toxic fish is? I don't know if any of you guys watch Seaspiracy, amazing. If you haven't, watch it. You will learn a lot about fish because I think a lot of people that are trying to avoid animal proteins still eat fish, but fish is toxic, unfortunately. Um, and and uh, fish can be loaded with beyond you know, mercury, uh, other things that unfortunately has, you know, gotten into our, to our water, including plastics and these types of things. Um, but understand the, the sources of, of mercury, you know, it can be really important for, for your thyroid. So I won't spend too much more time on that. Of course, if there's questions, let me know, but, um, let's go back to the heavy metals to understand about lead. Uh, I know I've skipped a, a couple others. Like I said, um, this guy, he's, he's actually had some barium, barium can be used in like uh, swallow studies. Uh, it's also in like certain industries that people work in. If you're around certain alloys, the car industry, for example, you may have exposure to some of these things, barium, beryllium, bismuth. Um, they, they don't cause, they, they can in large amounts. If you have really an excessive amount of these, uh, they can be more of an issue again for the immune system. Uh, they can interfere with the enzyme productions in the body, but not as common. So I won't spend too much time on them. But lead is another one. This guy doesn't have too much, but uh, when we start to see excessive amounts of lead, it can interfere with our absorption of magnesium, calcium, phosphorus. Uh, these ones can, can are really important actually for, for our bones, of course. Magnesium is responsible for some odd estimated like 800 functions in the body, more around like 300, I guess, but I've heard up to 800 too. Uh, and, it's, and it's really important for how our enzymes function, how we, we reproduce them and their structure. So magnesium is really important. Actually, this guy, I'm pretty impressed. Most people I see have really low levels of magnesium. Um, we, we utilize a lot of it when we're stressed. And also if you're a coffee drinker, uh, it can deplete your levels of magnesium, but they're also very important for, uh, like I said, the enzymes reactions in the body for our bone structure. This guy's particularly low in phosphorus. Um, phosphorus is found in whole grains, for example. So this may be a dietary source, but it also can be just from that interference with him having a high amount of some of these heavy metals too. So um, I, I, I want to just highlight a few other uh, things on the minerals, because I think that this is really important that we understand how important our mineral levels are too. Um, like sodium, potassium, for example, this is a little bit out of balance. Increase if you're someone that's holding on to water a little bit, maybe you're having too much sodium in your body, uh, reaching for foods that are high in potassium, like avocados, bananas, these types of things can really help to balance out. Our, our minerals help balance each other out in the body, like copper and zinc, sodium and potassium, calcium and magnesium. It's not uncommon when we see magnesium low that calcium is high. Um, so it's not necessarily to say, take a supplement about these things. You would wanna really get some guidance, but, but just understand that heavy metals may be interfering with how you're absorbing them as well. Um, chromium is a really important mineral for us too, because it helps us to regulate our blood sugar. So we commonly see chromium low in diabetics. Um, so that one is something to pay attention to. If someone comes back with a high hemoglobin A1C or high fasting insulin, we can help support how they can regulate their blood sugar by giving them a, a chromium supplement. Um, I don't suggest navigating this on your own. Um, you know, I, I think it's really easy to just be like, oh, magnesium is good for this. So I'm going to get on iHerb and I'm going to order this and I'm going to get myself some magnesium. Well, that's a common one. It's true. Probably you, you might be low, but you might have good levels of magnesium. You can see some of these that are crossing the line into okay or normal can look like they're normal, but actually it can just be because they're, they're uh, not bioavailable in the body. So sometimes you can take supplements and they may not be absorbing. So that's the other thing is that uh, you're maybe making all these efforts. You're like, gosh, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. And I, you know, um, I really, I, I take supplements. I see a lot of people like, I take a zinc supplement. Why is my zinc so low? But the thing is that you might not be absorbing it. So another thing that we really have to consider as we look at mineral levels is 
how much you're actually absorbing. Do you have heavy metals that are interfering with how they're absorbing, but also how is your gut health? Because that's another thing. If your gut is inflamed, if you might know if you're having a lot of symptoms of, of uh, an inflamed gut, maybe you're feeling bloated or uh, indigestion, these types of things, you might not be absorbing your minerals as well too. And, and it doesn't mean that a supplement's not gonna help, it will. I think supplements can be very helpful in, in short periods of time, but we really should be trying to focus more on getting whole foods that are going to be bringing us a lot of minerals, vitamins, antioxidants, these types of things. And particularly one last thing to note is sulfur. As it comes to these toxins in our body, this guy has particularly low sulfur um, and that would make it harder for him to detoxify naturally from heavy metals. So a lot of people are probably wondering, well, what can I do naturally to make sure that I don't get heavy metals? Number one is understand where do they come from? try to avoid them, try to avoid eating fish, try to avoid your, look at your ingredients on your body products, look on the EWG website, choose natural things you can use, olive oil on your skin, coconut oil, jojoba oil, shea butter, there's so many things that, that can be um, good. Um, even your powders that you're buying, if you're buying protein powders or certain herb, herb powders, um, these have been found sometimes with high levels of lead. So be careful about the, the products that you're choosing to consume, try to buy organic, but also try to eat a lot of sulfurous foods. So we talked about durian being one of the ones here. I know most people that are living in Thailand wouldn't have access to that, but it is really high in sulfur, but also things like um, the cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, bok choy, these ones are really high in sulfur. And also uh, the alum family, like onions, garlic, uh, even red pepper, these ones uh, can have a high amount of sulfur and they act like a sponge in your body. It acts to naturally help you to detoxify from heavy metals. And one last thing that I wanna mention is sweat. It sounds really simple, but exercising, turn off the air conditioning when you exercise, become the sweaty girl, don't put your, your, your deodorant on. Oh, okay. You can use a natural one, maybe something even they make with like uh, probiotics now that can help to reduce the bacteria. It's just the bacteria that causes the odor. You can wipe it off and reapply if you start to feel like you become uh, scented. Um, but actually sweating is a great way to remove heavy metals. So naturally. So I read a study a few years back that I thought was really interesting that they found higher concentrations of heavy metals in sweat than they did versus urine. And that surprised me because we always checked our cancer patients urine for heavy metals. Um, and so to know that sweat is very, a great effective way to remove heavy metals is a great case for exercising outdoors, turning off your air conditioning and getting your sweat on. So um, those are some of the things that, that can really help. You can try Corella, cilantro, these types of herbs can also be really helpful uh, to remove heavy metals. And um, again, my suggestion is check, you know, try to find access to some of these tests, get your mineral levels checked. Even if you don't check your heavy metals, you can just check your, your level of minerals. One other thing that this test does that uh, is, is an estimate, I wouldn't say that it's 100% is look at vitamins too. We have to consider levels of, of vitamins, um, you know, as we're talking about nutrition and, and foods. Um, because this is a really important part of, of keeping ourselves well. Anything under the 50% mark on this side would be considered low. So we have to pay attention to, you know, vitamin D, particularly for our immune system. Of course, B12, if you're plant-based, you might want to check about your levels every once in a while and find out where you're at if you're, you know, taking a supplement even. I see low B12 levels in... Um, it's not just for vegans also, it's, it's in everybody because again, it relates to the absorption. So it's really common that we see low levels of vitamins because we're just not absorbing them. And that can happen in uh, people that are omnivore as well. So uh, again, I talked about naturally detoxifying, just a few other tips, and then uh, I will uh, wrap up, AJ. Thank you for letting me ramble on so long. I can go on a lot about this topic, but uh, I think it's something really important for people to understand that um, even just our foods are really great ways to reduce heavy metals in the body. So choose the things that are high in sulfur, um, you know, even avocados, these types of things have, you know, glutathione, glutathione is the most potent antioxidant that we make in our liver and acetylcysteine is a precursor to that. So we can actually help produce more, uh, glutathione by using N-acetylcysteine. Um, that's another one that'll help us to bind to nat naturally to heavy metals. Infrared sauna is great for sweat, by the way, if you're not, if you have access to one. And then I mentioned chelation because uh, actually it's a treatment for heavy metals in high amounts. 
And so this is something that you would want to see a functional medicine doctor for, mm -hmm. someone that can you know, recommend chelation. It can be taken either intravenously by oral supplement or even a, um, a suppository. And this actually acts like a magnet. It helps to bind to the heavy metals so we treat them. It's a little bit more of an intense detox. Um, again, you could start with things that are more natural. You would want to consider that maybe if you had high levels or you suspected that, that it was causing problems for you, you could consider something like chelation. Um, be careful about chemicals and foods. Again, not just heavy metals, but we have to be aware of other types of, of chemicals found in the foods or uh, other forms of hormones like in animal proteins, you know, that they're giving these animals pro, um, hormones that we don't need. The animals are making their own hormones for, to maintain their 2000 pound body weight. You know, so we don't need to take in those extra forms of hormones. Um, even dyes in our foods, hair dyes was another one, by the way, for heavy metals. Uh, sugars, these alter our gut flora, they cause inflammation in our gut, they interfere with how we absorb our, our minerals and vitamins from our foods. Soda, <laughs> full of sugar, of course. And then one other thing that I, I want to point out, because it's a big problem here in Thailand, is plastics. Um, and, and there's so many other types of toxins, but I just wanted to highlight this one because again, it can really interfere with our hormones. Um, one of the things that's really common here, it actually makes me so irritated is like, if you order soup from somewhere, you go, you even just go out to like a, the street vendors are really common here, by the way, they're cooking in a, aluminum pots and pans, another source of aluminum, uh, it's, it's low quality. You can replace your pots and pans. Um, is BPA. BPA is found in plastic and can interfere with, um, it can act like estrogen in our body. They put hot soup in plastic bags here. So it's like really hot liquids, even plastic bottles that you're just drinking your water from. A lot of people store them outside. It's hot outside. So the BPA can leach into the water that you're drinking or the soup that you're eating, even heating in plastic. Um, or heating with aluminum foil. That was another one. Sorry, I didn't mention that all the things for aluminum. Uh, you can probably look up sources of aluminum and, and these other heavy metals on your own, but uh, heating in plastics, even aluminum foil, you can get these types of things into the food. So be careful, use glass if you're heating, glass pots and pans, even um, you know, better quality stainless steel, something like that, that can, you can be cooking in because this is a great way to avoid getting levels of, of BPA, high levels of BPA, um, or, or heavy metals. So uh, I can share this with you. There's a lot of information on this slide, uh, but just to be aware that, that this can be another issue for your hormones. So again, uh, be careful about food shopping, check the dirty dozen list. It's changing depending on where you're, a, where you're at. Uh, and as, as even in yearly, it'll change. And um, I always say use good, better, best when choosing because you know, there's, it's, it can be really hard to, to focus on best all of the time. You know, it, it costs more, maybe you, you can run yourself batty trying to find every single item that's organic. So if there's a good source of something, like if, um, you know, you can find, um, say, even we can use animal proteins as an example, you know, like if you're buying, say from McDonald's or, you know, a place where a restaurant, where you know, that they're not having really high quality foods, maybe try to start shopping on your own and, and making your own food. And then that would be the best version and then, or a better version. And then best might be that you're really trying to choose that or someone that's a, a product that's from a, um, you know, a really healthy source, you know, so something that is, you're avoiding the extra hormones that are added to the foods or these types of things. Same with, with vegetables, or even if, if good is buying, you know, the, the food in a box, maybe next time you choose the foods on the perimeter of the store. Uh, and then the next time best you choose organic or something like that. So the, the point is like, if there's a good version, maybe the next time try to buy best and then you work towards doing, doing, or sorry, better, and then work towards doing best, you know, so that you can always be improving your products that you're buying, the foods that you're consuming um, and the things that you're, you're putting into your body, because over time uh, avoiding these things can, can really make a huge difference in, in your health and uh, how your immune system functions, you know, for, um, these heavy metals are like free radicals in our body. They create inflammation, they create issues for, for the immune system. So try to avoid them uh, when you can. <laughs> That's it. Wow, that is amazing. You know, I don't think most people even think to check for heavy metals. Yeah, of course. I mean, and it's not necessarily that they're done like on labels or packages either. You, you definitely won't find many companies that are like, oh, we have heavy metals in our food. 
you know, so you really have to do your research, especially if it's something that you're using a lot, you know, like I know certain people really like to use protein powders, for example, you know, and unfortunately, if you do a little bit of digging and you do a little bit of research, you can find out that some of them aren't really good about screening for, for heavy metals um, or, or something. So if it's something that you love, it's a product that you really love. My suggestion is like, just, just take a minute to research it, you know, try to dig a little bit. You can find a lot of information now on the, on the World Wide web <laughs> on, on these products. So just be aware um, and, and like I said, of course, do the obvious things like choosing organics and, and these types of things. It's again, not always a safe bet. Some people argue like, oh, the, the fields are covered with, you know, no matter what, the, even lead, you know, can be used in, in uh, fuel for aviation. So even some of our organic farms may have some exposure to these types of things, but probably less. So again, it's just that better and best, you know, try to choose the things that have less and it will add up to, to better health. And, and again, like the, the more, most important thing is check, you know, check if you're concerned. Uh, know, I was, I like to say, know the value of your values. Check your, if you're not feeling great, check, go, go check your, your level of, of hormones, you know, check about your, your heavy metal exposure, your mineral levels, because they can make a difference in, in how you feel uh, tremendously. And of course, in reaching your goals too, if it's weight loss or if it's muscle gain or, you know, better sleep or, you know, better mood. <laughs> um, of course, all these things really matter. So. So there's a question, how, how do you get these tests? Do you, like, will a regular doctor do it? Can you do it on your own? Good question. I'm, I'm not sure in, in the U.S. how it is now. Uh, when I was living and working in the United States as a nurse, I worked in an integrative uh, health center, uh, particularly for cancer. So we had these types of tests. There's one in the United States called Doctor's Data that I would recommend. Uh, it's a urine test for heavy metals. And it, probably if you go to any type of uh, integrative health doctor, functional medicine doctor, they would have access to these tests. Um, I'm not sure with certain labs, it, like in Thailand, it's really great because you can walk, I could go to a lab right now and request any test that I want. Uh, you pay cash for it. It's, it's quite affordable here uh, to do these types of things compared to what the cash price is maybe in the United States. But you can also ask your doctor if it's something that you're concerned about and see if he has, um, you know, any, any information about it or any recommendation. Conventionally, they might not, you know, subscribe to these, these types of things. But I think more and more people are, are really understanding the value of understanding your, your micronutrient levels, how, you know, if you're low in vitamins or minerals, these types of things. Yeah. What about things like perfumes? Uh, is that, are, are those bad for us? You know, it's funny because when I moved to the desert two, a little over two years ago, I stopped using all the odorant and perfume and usually makeup. I have it on today because I was on a TV show, but generally I, I'm not really doing much. Absolutely. Perfumes, anything really that you put onto your skin. Perfume is another one that usually is high nail polish. Even uh, I was surprised to know how many chemicals are, are really found in, in nail polish, especially low quality ones. Um, I would say in, in makeup, it's, it's estimated that women put on, you know, over some thousand chemicals in their body every day in the different products that they use. My suggestion is just use a brand like maybe 100% pure, for example, I, I, we can't get it here. I've had people that are muling it over to me, you know, in Thailand, because uh, we don't have products that are, you know, now Sephora here has like, they rate the products in, in terms of um, how much chemicals that they have, but you can find some really great in the United States, some really great makeup brands that are free of chemicals that like, I like hundred percent pure. They use tea and vegetables to dye their, you know, lipsticks and their, I still use their um, blush. I, I bought like 10 of them at a time and brought them here. Um, sometimes with natural products, you know, they don't last as long. So I don't recommend buying 10 at a time because by the time you use your 10th one, it might smell bad, <laughs> but uh, you know, just making that, that little bit of an effort, you know, for your body products, women, especially boy, we use a lot of these. Um, you know, your soaps, your shampoos, these types of things. It's hard to avoid. Sometimes people argue they don't work as well. But again, the more that you do it, uh, the better health you end up with. Well, so, you know, and nail polish, does that include like when you get like acrylics or gel or the dip powder? Is it all bad? Particularly, yes, particularly those ones, especially because they stay on for so long. Uh, but actually there, I read a study a while back that they uh, could find these, these chemicals that are found in the nail polish, like up to a month later, you know, in the system, uh, after it was removed too. So it's really an exposure that is, is just unnecessary, unfortunately, you know, um, 
yeah, it, it, it's, I know we like to paint our nails. <laughs> it's a tough one, but even hundred percent pure makes, um, I know they make nail polish with like nine less of the more harmful chemicals. So you, again, good, better, best. If you're going to do it, maybe choose those, those better brands uh, so that you have less exposure. Boy, that means, so I'm thinking hair dyes probably pretty bad. Hair dyes is another big one. Yeah, you can find more natural hair dyes like um, henna or these types of things. Oh, sorry, there's a bug on my screen. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny, yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can find some that maybe have more, more natural dyes to them too, if you're, you know, if you want to cover or even like some of the, the powders maybe don't have, you know, but be careful because again, those are getting into your scalp, but you could maybe find more natural hair powders that can cover grays at the roots. You know, the, of course we all want to look good and, but we want to feel good too, because I, I tell you, like my experience as a nurse, when you work with people that, um, you know, when they hear cancer, for example, you know, it's, it's life-changing, you know, it's, it's um, an immediate change is necessary, you know, so while you're well, it's important to stay well, you know, I, I really can't stress the value of, of keeping yourself well, you can avoid these, you know, these types of diseases, uh, by keeping yourself well, and you don't want to have to be in a position where literally it's like everything overnight, you know, you, you have to change and, and be really careful about, so just do it while you can. You should write a book on this, because, you know, to think about it, you know, the price of beauty, that's what the book can be called. Yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. And there's, and there's so many things that we can do for beauty from the inside out, you know, rather we focus so much on the exterior, you know, and it's, that's understandable, of course, because we're, we're creatures of, of um, convenience. We want things that are going to be a fast solution, of course. Um, but it's true that we can work on, you know, our, our beauty comes from, from within. So really paying attention to your, your gut health, um, you know, drinking a lot of water, a lot of fluids, Drink, eating a lot of variety of, by the way, when we talked about minerals, having variety of foods is really important. We are creatures of, of convenience and habit. So we end up eating the same things. I, I mean, I can do it too. I have an acai bowl pretty much every morning at work because it's, I, I love it and it's delicious. Luckily they changed the fruit that's on the top of it. So I'm getting a variety, but the base I really like it's acai and it has some chia seed in it, you know, so it's a little bit of omegas and stuff, but um, I realized that I probably need to have a different breakfast every once in a while. <laughs> so it's, it's true. We should always rotate. If we were, you know, you naturally living on this earth, we would eat what is local and in season, you know? So uh, the more that you can buy locally grown things that they haven't had to travel a long way to get there, the things that are in season, rotate your greens, rotate your fruits, rotate your vegetables. I think Dr. Patel talked about that for thyroid health too, in terms of like, having different colors, you know, the rainbow, these are things we know it's harder to, to do and put into practice than, than it is that we, you know, we say it. So. Right. Okay. <laughs> so what do you think of those sticky tape things you wear on the bottom of your feet to detox from heavy metals? I don't know a lot about those, to be quite honest. Um, you know, I'm not sure what the, what the ingredients is in there. I, I would, I've never tried them myself. Um, but if there is something that maybe, I'm not, I'm not sure how they work. I'd have to ask, you know, like if they have you know, sulfur or, you know, how, how they're working, if they're um, giving you negative ions or, you know, something like that. I mean, even simply like a foot bath, it's kind of like our running joke in integrative health, like oh, a foot bath, but actually like negative ions are really good for you. They donate electrons to your cells. They help your cells stay more self, uh, healthy, just standing by the sea in this, in the, the waves coming in and churning creates negative ions too. So they, all these little things. I mean, I'm not opposed to, you know, trying things that maybe are a little bit, uh, of course, unconventional or integrative uh, on your liver. You know, there's maybe some ancient wisdom in some of these things too. So I would say just do your research before you buy something that's really, you know, an expensive product or something like that. Uh, or ask, you know, a, a functional medicine doctor about the, the value of those things. Great. Um, so let's think about titanium versus zirconium implants. Yeah, I think that these are, are really low exposure. They're not something that uh, is something that, that can create really a, a big issue in, in terms of my, my knowledge as it is right now. Um, I, I, have, I meet a lot of people that have, you know, metal implants in their body, but it's not something that we, you know, really check for in terms of like the, the heavy metal testing that we do. So I don't have a ton of information about it, but um, I know that there can be certain sensitivities that people have to either one of those 
types of um, implants. So that that can be a tough one because um, you might you might create you know you might have a sensitivity to something like that and, and not know it until you have a, an implant in your body. But um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't really know too much more about those. <clears throat> Great. I know a couple of people that actually had their implants for, you know, breast augmentation recalled and they had to have another operation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I actually have a lot of uh, people here that are removing breast implants too. Um, maybe not necessarily in terms of like the, you know, I, I don't know about heavy metals in, in the breast implants, but in terms of the, the plastics, the silicone, you know, the exposure that, that it can potentially give you, I think is is something that's worth looking into. Um, anything that's a foreign entity in our body, you know, anything that's really off from 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 where we are, probably should really be be questioned. You know, um, obviously we're designed to live pretty natural lives and in, in in you know eat from the trees and eat from the soil and you know not have too much of these this intervention. Uh, you know, so the the more that you avoid those types of things, I would say probably the the healthier you. Right. Richard says, is it true that the best foods to buy organic are those that ones that eat the skin, that you eat the skin of like apples, for example, most people don't eat the skin of the banana. So maybe organic isn't necessary. Yeah, that's true. You can check like the EWG, you know, things that have maybe um, hot, you know, thicker skin you don't necessarily use, but interesting thing happens, I think with certain vegetables and fruit, like I didn't realize coffee, for example, is something that is, that is heavily sprayed. Um, even cotton, um, you know, is something that is heavily sprayed and we, you know, use our feminine products, for example, going off a little bit on the, on the skins of apples, but I mean, just things that we need to be aware of, but yeah, I would say check the dirty dozen because, uh, it's true in, in general that like berries, leafy greens, you know, apples, these types of things that don't really have much of a barrier to the, the fruit that you're actually eating would contain, you would be consuming more of those chemicals. But uh, it's, it's surprising sometimes that in certain plants, they will actually use more chemicals seasonally because the, the bugs change, the, you know, the, the needs for those plants change. So um, like I said, I would have never expected pineapple to be an issue because it's got a thick skin and you take it off, but because it's grown in the ground, you know, it's, it's absorbing, it's leaching all the chemicals that could potentially be, have been sprayed on that, that crop or that field, whatever was growing there years ago, even. So even these, these chemicals, they, they don't go away within the season. It takes years to, to get the right type of soil for a farmer to have a truly organic farm. Wow. This has just been so fascinating. Is there any way to keep up with you or follow you? Where can we be, stay in touch? Yeah, I, I, my Facebook is Nicole Danielle. Um, and also my Instagram is uh, Nikki underscore underscore nurse underscore underscore. <laughs> I don't do too much posting on there. Um, but you know, you're more than welcome to follow me. And uh, I'd be happy to if you have any questions, if you want to reach out or you're interested in just in Thailand in general, I know a lot of people have interest in coming to Thailand. It's really like an exotic idea to travel so far if you're you know from the United States I mean people thought it was crazy that I was going to move to to Thailand when I came here especially with my kids they were very little my daughter was just four when I came here uh, but Thailand is an amazing place and if you're thinking about traveling here please connect with me I'm happy to help you know answer any questions that you have or give you any tips Bangkok is becoming like an amazing place to become vegan um, and and there is an island called Copenhagen in Thailand that is now, you can find videos on YouTube that they're calling it like the vegan island. And there is so many restaurants and, and such a huge movement, you know, uh, for, for people that are, you know, wanting to travel there for that reason. So it's a great place to live and a great place to, to be vegan, uh, to live a healthy lifestyle, learn some meditation, have a really great um, lifestyle. So I'd be, I'd love to hear from you if, if you have any questions. Thank you so Thank much you. for being bringing vegan children into the world. And please introduce me to one of the wonderful chefs there that you know that are vegan. I'd love to have them on the show. Definitely, we're gonna do something because Thai food is so great. Like uh, some tam, which is papaya salad, which you can still find in, in the United States. You can get the green papaya, I guess. Uh, you got to go to maybe an Asian store or something or some oh the pomelo salad, which is like a grapefruit. Um, these are really good salads, but there's so many other, it ties easy to make 
it's traditionally vegetarian, actually. Most people are Buddhist here and they're traditionally vegetarian. We've just gotten a little bit far away from that, but uh, this, the foods here are so delicious and so easy to make um, Thai, or vegan style. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much, Nurse Nikki. This has been wonderful. And thanks to all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at the regular time of 11 a.m. when Go Green with Amy, excuse me, Be Green with Amy. They're going to make a delicious SOS free lasagna. It's so great connecting with you again, Nikki. Take care. Thank you, AJ. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.